What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lazy Geeks podcast here on the Lazy Geeks Network. I'm Stephen Vargas, and uh, as promised last week, I said we were going to drop a uh, previously unreleased episode, and I am on here to tell you, yes, we are fulfilling that. (laughs) So this week we're taking off because of the Labor Day holiday, so we're just kind of relaxing and not having to do a show. Uh, normally we take September's off, but this year we've taken quite a few. We've had a lot of unforeseen circumstances pop up. So we decided that this year would be better served if we decided to just forego that and do the show. And then later on next year, we may take another month off, but at, at that point, it'll probably be somewhere deep in the middle of summer. So we're taking off this time, uh, this week. But we will be back next week. So this week is an episode. Usually when I do the rewinds, they tend to be old episodes that I call the lost episodes. When we had them on another on another hosting site and moved over, we didn't have the money, budget, whatever you want to call it, to host these podcasts on another host or server or archive or anything like that. Um, unfortunately due to an accident on an external that I was um, using this, and I've mentioned this on on podcasts before, uh, a lot of those early episodes prior to the ones, if you go on to our Libsyn site, start with number 36, a lot of those previous ones are gone. However, I have managed to find uh, more than a handful of episodes that I usually use in play uh, and remaster them and then uh, resubmit them for you guys to hear and it's under the name the lazy geeks uh rewind or previous years it's been summer rewind so those will be episodes if we decide to take a week off i'm going to try to throw some of those episodes up um, until i run out of those episodes and then it'll probably be just early early episodes of even even worse quality than we had back in the day so this one is our last episode of 2010 keep in mind we started this podcast in october of 2010 and did I roughly believe about eight shows at that point? I think this is our ninth one. Uh, so you can go to the Lazy Geeks website and go under Summer Rewind or Lazy Geeks Summer Rewind, and you'll see those first eight episodes on there. And this one is the last one. Adam sounds like shit because he's sick. We managed to do this show, and I, this is pretty much just a recap of 2010 of things that we liked and all of that. And I believe. The infamous cataclysm or cataclysm World of Warcraft expansion that came out that year. Uh, we have that infamous skit that I think Adam has referenced a few times on the show. So uh, definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun and it's kind of funny listening to that because, you know, the quality was bad and, you know, we were just kind of two schmucks, pretty much still the same as we're, we are now, except our quality, our, our uh, equipment is a little bit better. Uh, and if you don't believe me, just listen to last week's show and then you'll, you'll be able to tell. Um, first, like I said, Adam's sick as a dog, so you'll hear it in his voice. And I, for some reason, got really excited about the special, the, the sound effects and the music that I threw in there. I don't know. I must've had a lot of time on my hands. So, well, actually, yeah, I think we were both still unemployed from the big financial meltdown before. So I think that gave me a reason to, to do this. So, uh, check it out. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is for uh, Monday, and later this week, I will throw up a rewind of the away team, which will be us talking about uh, Code of Honor, I believe is the title, where Tasha Yar is is being sought after by this king who wants her to be his queen. So be sure to check it out, uh, and uh, we will be back next week with a brand new episode ready to go for you. So until then, here is The Lazy Geeks, episode nine, last of 2010. Welcome to The Lazy Geeks Network.
Uh, welcome everybody to the Lazy Geeks, and uh, this is Nomad, and over here is the barely alive uh, Sapien. I'm sick. I'm sick, and I don't want to hear no shit. <laughs> you, you guys you've, are l- you've always been mentally sick, dude. You guys are lucky I'm even here right now. <laughs> oh yeah, we're so lucky. That's right. I need uh, I need women to come and shower me with gifts, <laughs> lavish me with presents. Uh, man, but well, yeah, you sounded better yesterday than you did today. Well, that's usually the progression of a cold, isn't it? It just gets worse until it gets better. But yet yesterday he was saying. Oh, I'm getting better. I'm getting starting to get over the cold now. Yeah, don't you hate that shit? No, real quick. Don't you hate that shit <laughs> where you're like, oh, getting better. Everything's fine. Then you wake up the next morning and you go, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I feel like you got ran over by a fucking freight train. Oh, my God. Or you got, yeah, somebody took a Louisville slugger to your chest. I would. I rather would have took the slugger, dude. Dude, fuck. Derek Jeter just went crazy on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> you should have got shot like in the good <laughs> – <laughs> the good, good guys. The, the other guys. guys. The other the guys. Other guys. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> uh, oh, first, first things off, I got to let everybody know, this is our last regular podcast for the year. Yep. Yeah, because, uh, you know, once we drop this bomb on everybody. Drop it. We'll only have, we'll have the week of Christmas and then the week of New Year's, and this will be 2010. You know, if you go onto the website, lazygeeks.com. You know, we're not going to leave you completely hanging for the holidays. We'll have uh, a couple little specials for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to probably sound better when those specials come out. Yeah, but I'm not holding up too much hope for that. For the ladies. For the ladies. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, before uh, before uh, Sapien flatlines over here, I think uh, we might <laughs> want to drop into why is this news? All right, so first up, uh, earlier this week it came out that uh, George Lucas was apparently supposed to be buying up uh, rights to um, older films because apparently there was uh, this story from, uh, oh, what was the fuckhead's name? Uh, guy used to, oh, Mel Smith, he's a collaborator, and... Um, uh, he used to be a collaborator with George Lucas, and he's wait, wait. I thought he was a fuckhead. <laughs> well, he is a fuckhead. Uh, okay, but um, he was a former uh, collaborator with uh, George Lucas, and he also criticized George Lucas for using way too much CG in the last two Star Wars films. Uh, but apparently, well, I agree with him on that. Well, yeah, but uh, apparently, he gave a uh, uh, interview and stated that George Lucas was buying up film rights to a lot of old films because he had the intention of using their likeness and to make one a major superstar studded film using their likenesses cg wise um well like a day or so later it came out that george lucas denied having any of these plans that he was not going to do this um why is this news because it's news because for once George Lucas hasn't lost his mind completely. <laughs> and that this guy is I mean, he, it's it's one of those things where you're just you look at it and you think, "No, dude, why why would you want to do that?" Um, you know, we have a lot of actors as it is anyway, and you know what? Right now what the problem with CG is most actors are complaining that <laughs> they don't need it. They won't have a job if CG keeps going the way it's going. You know, like with the advent of Avatar and those kind of films where it's all CG related. They, there's no real work for the actors. And sometimes they won't even need the screen. They won't, they'll just digitally create the character and, uh, and, uh, go that route, which is what ILM has always kind of been pushing to do. But, uh, in this case, I, it, it's, it's nice to know that he hasn't completely lost his mind. Um, even though, for I, and on a personal note, I think George Lucas might like a CG actor because <laughs> we know he can't direct a real one. So uh, he might. Uh, <laughs> too soon, too soon. <laughs> but uh, made me cough on that bit. <laughs> but we'll we'll see if he can actually use 
um, we'll we'll see if he can actually uh, keep that promise because I I think in the back of his mind somewhere, or in the jowl that extends beyond his beard, he probably in the he, depths he, of his mind, he probably has some some idea back there where he's thinking about maybe I'll use some of that, but we'll see. He's- he should bring back uh, Howard the Duck. I, I knew you were going to go say that. Howard the Duck. <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on to the next topic here is uh, this is funny. This I put this on the website uh, because this doesn't make any goddamn sense, dude. <laughs> I put this on the website and labeled it "What the fuck?" because a member of Cypress Hill. Uh, what's his name? Douchebaggery. Um, Michael S- Shag Washington. So it's got to be Washington, doesn't it? It's like Washington. You ever, any? It's also a street too. Anytime a street's called Washington Street, it is a ghetto fucking street. <laughs> you do not want to be on that street. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's suing Rockstar Games and Take Two Interactive Software for a cool two hundred and fifty million dollars for alleged for allegedly basing the lead character in the game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, okay, San Andreas, uh, on his troubled youth, um, and apparently the lead character uh, CJ. Looked like him. No, he didn't. So, uh, this, why is this news? Because it's so fucking retarded. (laughs) Stupid. Uh, First of all, this game came out, what, like six years ago? Seriously. And he just, what, did he just play the game? (laughs) It must be because he used to. He used to spray paint his neighborhood when you had to go around and spray paint all the fucking spray paint areas. You know what happened, dude? He was probably stoned one night because if he was a member of Cypress Hill, then he was most likely stoned one night. Uh, and one of his buddies busted out their PS2 yeah. and was playing it and going, dude, doesn't that guy look like you? Yeah, he kind of does. Dude, I should sue them for that. You'd make so much money off of that shit. I mean, dude, what the fuck, dude? According to the complaint filed in L.A. Superior Court, Washington is a model and backup singer for the rap, with the rap group Cypress Hill, and met the game de- met with the game developers for two hours, just two hours, to answer questions about his street life including how teenagers in his gang rode around on bicycles, quote-unquote. He said that uh, he was told by the game developers that if they chose to use him in the game, he was he would be notified. Well, uh, he, he wasn't. So instead, he was shocked to see that the lead character of CJ looked like him. Now he claims his life story was stolen, and in the lawsuit claims 25% of the profits from the billion-dollar game. He told his life story in two hours? I guess. That's, that's kind of fucking sad. It is kind of sad. It's two hours. <laughs> no, mine would be an epic eight-part, 80-hour... Mine wouldn't even be a fucking miniseries. It would be like the Harry Potter films. <laughs> Part one and two. What up? But, I mean... But, you know, I, I can kind of see where he's coming from. Because, you know, I was looking at... Um, I was playing my old PS2, and I was playing uh, Dynasty Warriors. And, um, you know, they kind of took a little bit from my life, too, you know? Because when I was a, you know, a Japanese warrior, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 I did, I, you know, I did lead an army, you know, trying to, trying to put down the rebellion. So, you know, I mean, I think I can see that. You know, I, had a, I had a moment like that, too, where I kind of want to sue Disney because uh, that Little Mermaid bit. I mean, I've been swimming in the ocean before. Yeah, that's all me. Then that's all yeah. me because I had told Mickey at fucking Disneyland that I went swimming in the fucking ocean, and that's what happened. They fucking took that idea and they made a dumbass movie about it. Well, remember we were talking last week about Kingdom Hearts. Remember yeah. how you know we're like, dude, that looks a little familiar. You know, it was like our Saturday night, yep. and I was like, that's just not right. 
But that's why I don't like telling people about our epic fuck quest and shit. So always taking information from us. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. I know. Can't have any originality in this world. I know. It, it sucks, man. Well, the next uh, number three, I think, is a is a little personal to uh, Sapien over here. You know what, dude? Olivia Munn used to be the host of Attack of the Show, and now she's been replaced. With this chick named Candace Bailey. That's fine. Everybody moves on. Everybody gets new jobs. Olivia Munn didn't even say shit. She didn't have a goodbye episode. She didn't say bye to the fans or nothing. Like we're all supposed to just follow her to whatever other fucking wackadoo shit she's fucking doing. So basically. Oh wait. Yes. I'm a douchebag list. But I'm just saying. (laughs) This is news because you know the whole dynamic of the show is changing. I think it's changing for the good, to be honest. This new Candace Bailey chick seems, you know, just like a different type of person. I think she's going to play off the host now, Kevin, play off pretty well. I just think it's really dick how Olivia Munn just fucking dips out and doesn't say shit. So, fuck her. Well, I mean, I noticed, too, when I started realizing that she was doing some stupid stories for The Daily Show. And it was like, Really? So you're going from one cable show to the Daily Show, which has, which is basically Ston- John Stewart's show, and you kind of, and she, I mean, she's not even like a creative writer because a lot of those guys, like you know, Richard, Bl- um, Lewis Black was on there, um, the uh, English guy from Community, the one that plays the psychologist, yeah, he he was on there, and a lot of those guys. Brian Unger, a lot of those guys are comedians and write their own shit. So, you know, she's not like that. She's just, she's just like a, uh, well, a, basically a hot chick that just tells everybody. And then she may have her own little, oh, I got Mike joke in on this, in, the, in this story, but it's mostly written by other people. Yeah. You know? And, and to be honest, you know, she'll be replaced. She won't be missed all that much. I mean, yeah, she's, she, She's hot, but she's 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 not a standout. She's not a standout hot. Like the reason why, oh, this chick is hot because she, you know, is smart. She's intelligent, you know, and all the stuff. She's quick, you know. She just was a co-host on some cable show, and she'll probably fade into obscurity because there's nothing stand out about her. Yep. And I, she's not exactly a Shakespearean trained actor. Yeah. And the, another know. thing too is that anybody, and I've always had resentment for people who. You know, never acknowledge, you know, something that brought, got them out there and yeah. just kind of diss it. I always think that that's, that's very uncool. And, um, but like the creator of, um, of coupling and the new executive and the current executive producer, Dr. Who, Stephen Moffat once said, um, actors will forgive you for virtually anything except their first big success. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I, I can see why that. I can, I can see why, and the, the gaming community, especially the gamers, the geeks, all of that, they're not going to freaking no. forgive easily. They're going to be like, "Oh fuck her, dude! I'm going to go off and uh, not watch her movie." I mean, whoa, she's in Iron Man two. Ooh, big whoop! She just did this. She pl- what did she play? A news reporter, and for a hot second, too. yeah, and that was it. But then Scarlett Johansson came on the screen and everybody forgot about Olivia Munn. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's um, – she's going if to she, – If she would have just had like an episode where she said, you know, thank you for blah, 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 that we wouldn't even be having this conversation yeah. to be honest. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for the rundown. All right. First thing up today, uh, I posted this yesterday on the website, Real Steel – the trailer for that. Um, yeah, I have to kind of go with a fail on this one because, you know, I like Hugh Jackman. That's the thing. I like Hugh Jackman, but when you have monster machines on crack, it just doesn't seem like the kind of movie that you would really want to, to watch. I mean, here's uh, – you got – Hugh Jackman playing, I guess, a former boxer, from what I can tell by the trailer, and is apparently run out of business because robots are taking control. So he decides to get in the game and make some money and develop a robot. I mean, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's Transformers, 
but with no semblance of a story. And I'm assuming there's a story in there somewhere as vague as it is. But uh, I, I have to really kind of give this one a fail because I looked at this and I was just like, wow, really? It, just, it was just like completely ridiculous to me. Yeah, well, I don't know. It just seems like they're trying to... It's yet another movie that doesn't really have an original idea. You know what I mean? Anyway, the friggin... I don't know. It looks like a movie I'll pass out on. Or not pass out on. <laughs> <laughs> pass up on. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I really have to, uh, it's kind of sad. All right, next one. I think a lot of you may have seen this. If not, you probably will coming into the, the holiday season. Transformers, Dark of the Moon. Uh, it's nice to know they dropped Transformers 3 to not indicate that it did come after 2. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually, the, the, if you haven't seen the trailer yet, you should check it out because it has very, uh, it has a very f- like vague rem- uh, resemblance to like Armageddon, which was one of my favorite action movies, uh, and it deals with the the lunar landing of Apollo Eleven on the moon. And uh, there's a point in history when they uh, they go out of radio uh, contact for about 21 minutes, and uh, of course in the trailer during that 21 minute blackout. They go on a secret mission for NASA because they found something crashed on the moon. And, of course, it's a, a robot, which kind of looked like Unicron. Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of thinking Unicron, that would that would be a pretty interesting character. Uh, but as far as teaser trailers go, I dug it. I, I mean, I hate it. And don't get me wrong, I hated the second one. Yeah. I mean, the second movie just... I mean, it just... It, it, it's... it's Suck more dick than Lindsay Lohan looking for crack. I mean, it just. And that's a lot of dick. That is. That is a lot of dick. But, um, I had to give it a win. Cause I, I, I pretty much, I dug it. I'm gonna agree with that too. Cause the trailer was just sick. I like how they worked in, like, American history and shit. You know, I thought that was kind of. Walter Cronkite little tip. Yeah, today. like, I was like, that was kind of sick, dude. But, um, it just looks interesting. This is something I, I would want to see. I probably wouldn't go to like a midnight show. I think I'd want to catch it in the theater. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing too. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's probably not going to, it's not going to suck because it still can. I mean, the trailer was just good. Yeah. It, it piqued my interest and maybe go, hmm, I like it. And I like a movie that tends to incorporate history into its storyline. Yeah, man. This is the shit. Let's go see it. All right, next one. Thor. Speaking of midnight showings, <laughs> uh, yes. Thor. Um, if you haven't checked it out, yeah, I know the quality is not that great, but you know it. It is the it is a trailer. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be the official release trailer because it's supposedly supposed to come out with the new Narnia film, Voyage of the Threader. Yeah. Yes. Um. So we will see, but here this one gives you a good insight as to as to what the story is going to look like. And Natalie Portman, um, you see Natalie Portman in it. Um, Thor comes out with the hammer. So badass. Um, you have um, Anthony Hopkins as Odin. Um, you didn't see really much of the other cast. You know, you, I think you caught a glimpse of Loki, um, and uh, a quick glimpse. quick glimpse, but. Um, Scale wise, it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, looks like they're not holding back. No, and that, and it's good. I mean, Kenneth Branagh is directing it, so it, it should definitely be an interesting film. I I liked the trailer mostly because I'm just a comic geek, uh, and uh, always kind of thought Thor was a badass dude. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm very curious to see how this kind of um story plays out i i I definitely will probably see this as a midnight show uh just because no one's ever done a thor movie before yeah and um like i like i said in the um in my review that it wasn't so much that i didn't i i i liked it but i i didn't love it and i think it was because that it didn't seem to be as much of a build-up just kind of like an already this is a trailer for you know you, you didn't get this kind of special yeah Build up. It, it was just like they put a bunch of scenes together. It wasn't really something incredible. Yeah, and um, 
So I'm still going to reserve judgment for whatever the final trailer comes out to be because I, I definitely want to see what it looks like, and, and maybe that'll pump it up a little bit. I, I have to give this a win. I, I, I really do, yeah. mostly because of the fact that it's the first Thor movie, and I think that's what kind of... That's what kind of I fully agree. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sapien's pretty boring today, isn't he? Um, hey, you know what? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, the Thor, the Thor trailer was a shit. Be honest, I just saw it fucking before we started recording, and um, I mean it's a shit. It's good to see fucking big time actors like Anthony Hopkins in that motherfucking movie, man. I'm happy that they're not holding back. I'm happy that they're not making some cheesy fucking story about some bullshit wannabe Thor that's actually fucking Thor thrown down from the heavens like nick fury starving david hasselhoff <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's fucking it's good to see that i half ass in it that's cool yeah all right well i think that takes us up to our first break um i think sapien's gonna go blow his nose and uh uh when we come back we will be talking about Cataclysm. Yes. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about some of our concerns regarding the uh, the new Hobbit film. And yes. um, I think we're going to touch on a couple of reviews here too. So we will be right back. The Lazy Geeks go to a KKK rally. The fuck did we end up here? I don't know, but this is the last time I fall asleep at Disneyland. All right, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think uh, Sapien's got his second wind here. Um, I have Dayquil on my tongue and a dream in my heart. <laughs> oh, man. And Jessica Alba on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That happened, then we'd be going, every little thing going to be all right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, all right. I think uh, I think the first topic is uh, is a heavily you issue here. Yes, it is <laughs> because uh, no man's a punk bitch. <laughs> I mean, not a player of World of Warcraft. <laughs> which now you had it right the first time. Simply <laughs> translates into a punk bitch. <laughs> anyway, well, um, see, you know, I have a life. I like to go out. And I like to, you know, I go out all the time. Just, just, uh, just this morning, I was going fishing. out to get Mountain Dew just so you can go back and play World of Warcraft. Doesn't count. This morning, just this morning, I was fishing um, in Stormwind at the pond. You know, I mean, I went out. Jesus. Yeah, I went out next door and fed the neighbor's cod. What? Oh, oh <laughs> shit, that show's so funny. Dude. <laughs> wait, wait. Cue the music. <laughs> so, Cataclysm. If you did, I'm sure you know, Cataclysm released, okay? And it's the shit! Because <laughs> all of all of uh, the old world shit in, in um, I almost said Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, uh, Whoops! <laughs> the world of Warcraft has changed. I've been, I've been uh, leveling a brand new hunter, Human Hunter, which wasn't even possible back in the day. Human Hunter... I'm like level 35 now. It's just fucking so sick. The storylines, like each zone has its own individual storyline. The quests are fucking all we did. It's just the shit. Like seriously, just they got two new races, right? Because you get to level 85 now. So the two new races are Worgen and Goblins. Goblins are goblins. Okay, I'm not going to explain. If you don't know what a goblin is, you're an idiot. A Worgen is it's like a werewolf, right? And Worgens are the Alliance, Goblins are the Horde. So they basically, have, they have uh, werewolves. Do they have vampires in there too? No, they don't because it isn't some Twilight gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Team Jacob on the <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> they keep <laughs> their shirts <laughs> on, homie. <laughs> right. Fucking <laughs> fucking noobs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I do have talking points, so I probably should look at them. Um, so let me read because <laughs> my voice is so sexy. Let me read the uh, intro. He gets lost in the sound of his own voice. Yeah. Sound like fucking sandpaper rubbing on a cat's ass. <laughs> uh, let me read the intro, the official intro from the official site. An ancient evil lies dormant within Deep Home. The 
the domain of Earth in the uh, and the elemental plane. See what happens when I try to be cool. Yeah. Hidden away in a secluded sanctuary, the corrupted dragon aspect Deathwing. Real quick, Deathwing is a dick. Is, wasn't that the wasn't that Dick Grayson that ended up uh, leaving Batman? Yeah, well, but that's not what we're talking about. Oh. De- Deathwing is the dragon that. Um, Basically, because I haven't read the book yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Darkwing Duck. Sorry. The shit. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> um, now you got to be on some other shit. I don't know. It just, um, Deathwing? Yeah, Deathwing. So Deathwing, I haven't read the book yet. There's a book out called The Shattering. Uh, New York Times bestseller, too. Like, it's real serious and shit. And it's supposed to fill you in on, you know, all the storyline shit. But what I know right now is that Deathwing escaped from his prison and he fucked everything up. And that's why all of Azeroth, the old world, is all fucked up. Like you see places where he fucking just dug the earth up. He's just an epic dude. Let me finish this shit. So this is an allegory for the Obama administration, right? <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> <dude. laughs> Dragon Aspect Deathwing has waited, recovering from his wounds of his last battle against Azeroth, and biding his time until he can reforge the world in molten fire, which... From what I've seen, I think he's almost finished. Because <laughs> it's all fucked up. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. This is some more shit, but I don't really need to read it. Okay. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Like I said, level cap increased to 85. What was the level cap before? 80. Let's give you Lich King. Yeah, they give you five. I mean, they were... A lot of people, for some reason, were upset. Like, they thought it was going to go to 90. But that the last fucking... Uh, I think it was, it was, it was BlizzCon... They stated it was only going to 85. But for some reason, you know, you should go. If, if anyone of you have not been to the WoW forums, just go and read how crazy everybody gets about this game. I'm going to tell a little story after this bit. And you're going to fucking laugh your ass off. So, six new high level zones. Because obviously, if you got five new levels, you need to fucking, you know, level. It's Mount Hyjal and Uldum. If I pronounce things wrong, I don't care because I'm sick. <laughs> Those are in Kilmador, uh, Bashir, and Twilight Highlands are in the Eastern Kingdom. Aha! See, Twilight Highlands. You Fuck know. you. Dude. Just saying. It's, epic, it's epic Twilight, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twilight. And this game was out before the fucking stupid movies. <laughs> Twilight East, you got me fucked you, up. You realize they were books before they were movies, right? Yeah, but no one else did. Oh! <laughs> No one read those pussy ass books, dude. New York Times was telling me because they were the perfect thickness to prop up tables and shit. <laughs> Deep home in the elemental plane of Earth, which is where fucking douchebag is from, Deathwing, and the PvP zone and daily quest hub, Toll Barat. Barat, whatever. Okay, new classes, like I said, Worgen, the werewolf dudes, and goblins. Goblins are fucking epic, dude. Like they got, they're they're short, like the gnomes in the game, but they're green and they they all talk with like a Jersey accent. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, actually, if you think about it, most Jersey guys would probably pass for goblins anyway. You know, firsthand experience, I'm going to say that's the truth, and no disrespect to my Jersey brothers, but y'all look like goblins. <laughs> um, class redesign, so like the talent trees are simplified, and new spells and shit. Like uh, on my hunter. I got this thing called Steady Shot. Brand fucking new. Like, it's a good way to start out a fucking, a little fucking tactic and shit. Um, different races can be different classes. Like I said, I can be a hunter down my human. Um, the big thing now, too, is that, uh, what was the fucking, oh, a dwarf can be a shaman. Um, the tauren can be paladins now. The nomad has no fucking idea what I'm talking about. But I know someone who's listening to this knows what I'm talking about. All right. Anyway, uh, new new profession you can do is archaeology. You can get down and fucking archaeology is kind of interesting. Like you can just fly around looking for clues and shit. Like where in the world's Karma San Diego shit? You know, <laughs> um, guild advancement system is kind of dope. You can level up like you level up your main shit, but then you have this level up bar, experience bar for your guild. Like what you did with your guild, your little perks and shit. You level that up. Uh, lore changes, obviously. Like, um, for example, Garrosh Hellscream is the new leader of the Orcs. Thrall has left the throne to go do other things. 
And uh, well, they, they decided to go a different direction, so he, he got it, his unemployment yeah, yeah, papers. Yeah, he got, he got cut. Yeah. He actually well, enjoyed some, I can't remember their name, but because uh, Thrall is the world's strongest druid. He went to go join an, an order with them. But this Garrosh Hellscream, as his name probably leads to, is kind of a warmongering dick. So the, the tensions are thick between, like the orcs and the humans were always like, didn't like each other, but they were okay in the lore, but now they're fucking, they don't like each other. There's like war, they're all fighting everywhere. Like I just, I'm in the um, a new zone, the Southern Barons, as Alliance, obviously, and it's just fucking orc killing human. It's like old school fucking Warcraft 1 style, dude. Like, they're all fighting. Uh, oh, look at my fucking, my talking points. Lore changes. Garrus Hell's Cream, leader of orcs, and Death Deathwing is an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it was just straight up. Deathwing is an asshole. So, uh, just, you know, just real quick, just from my own experience with Level of Hunter, like I said, when I also have children and a wife, so I, I don't fucking play it 24 hours a day. Um, it's just so fucking streamlined, like the, the questing, you just move through it. You don't even notice that you're leveling anymore. You just, you just, it's so clean. It's so cool. I'm not top level yet. Um, but I, I have spoke to a couple of buddies of mine that, that are, are either at 285 or working to it. They say that it's 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 all great content. I mean, Blizzard is never disappoints. I mean, this shit is top notch. Even the motherfucking soundtrack. I had a Nomad listen to the soundtrack. He said this is the shit. I mean, fucking, it's the shit. If you don't fucking own it and you have means to purchase it, go to the fucking store and buy it. If you don't buy it, you're a dickhead. You don't know what you're See, I'm telling you right now. I got off my bed sick. Just to come tell everyone to go buy this fucking expansion pack for this game. That's how I'm going to cry. I'm not crying. <sighs> anyway, you should really go buy it. <laughs> I have to admit, you know, I saw the trailer for it, and it, it was pretty epic. I mean, I, yeah, I know, Blizzard always does everything to the hilt, and uh, the soundtrack was, was to a grand scale, epic. Um, yeah, the, right. the video, you know, everything just was was awesome about that. And you know, like you said, you know, I'm not into the whole World of Warcraft. Yeah, I'm not into the just MMOs in general, which is why it, you know, balancing myself out with uh, with Sapien works because he is into those MMOs. He's into a lot of those online games, and you know, yeah, I'm awesome because I'm the shit. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's also a shut in. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I have kids and a wife. That's who I'm with. <laughs> like I said, he's a shut-in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. And I and I and that's probably why it's been a, such a slow news week. Is uh, everybody's playing this much like they were when Call of Duty came out a couple weeks ago? Oh man, we're fucking cataclysm drop like nothing. Seriously, like I don't know if you noticed to the website, the, there hasn't been a lot of posts, and even the posts that happened, most of them were kind of just. They're just reaching on if they're news or not. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the world fucking stopped. I mean, look at G4. Everybody was like, oh, we're re-rolling goblins. All these G4 people that work their shows. And all the shows are just like, they, it almost sometimes seems like they're rushing so they can get off the set. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Uh, well, I mean, it's, yeah, and, and, you know, like I said, you know, Sapien's been playing it consistently uh, even before it dropped. And uh, he was just all he was talking about was just how everything changed and how how much cooler it was. And yeah. didn't you play it twice? You know, you level a character all over again or something like that. That's what I'm doing right now because yeah. I had I had a top level hunter. Well, to be to run it down real quick, I had an account back in the day um, before Wrath of Lich King, which was the um, second expansion came out. The expansion expansion before this one. Um, it was right before that it came out, and I had a, I had like a top level hunter, and I had I had an almost top level uh, warrior, and I stopped playing for a little because I couldn't afford it, and then I came back only to realize that someone that I actually knew in real life had hacked my shit, and uh, they were using my stuff to transfer like bought gold, which is against the rules, and um, they had Blizzard had fucking deleted the account. 
So I lost all my shit. So after I got done killing and burying the guy who hacked my account, I just started allegedly, over allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. allegedly. Um, <laughs> that's why this this whole cataclysm thing is a perfect time. Like, like if you used to play World of Warcraft, go take a look. Go to the go to your Battle.net account. It'll give you a free seven days to check it out. Like come check out the difference. You don't have to buy Cataclysm to see all the new questing that shit happened before Cataclysm came out. I mean, fucking come check it out. I checked it out. I didn't even have, I didn't even plan on staying. My ass can't stop fucking playing that game. <laughs> check it out. Uh. All right. Well, um, the other main topic for the week is uh, Sapien and I have been having some concerns regarding the Hobbit movie. Now everybody knew everybody's everybody knows that you know it was an idea of whether it was actually going to be get made or not, and then where it was going to be filmed, and now all that's come to calm the fuck down. But uh, they're filming it in the Sahara Desert, <laughs> which you know, if in the right light, it can pass for you know you know the Shire. And yeah, yeah, all yeah, that, yeah. You know, Just spray paint it green. <laughs> But uh, apparently they've gone ahead and started uh, some some kind of weird casting. Uh, like uh, Kate Blanchett is going to be reprising her role as a uh, Galadriel. However, I don't believe she was mentioned in the book. No, she wasn't in The Hobbit. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of like neither was fucking. Uh... Legolas, yeah, and it's also going to be in the movie. Yeah, they said they're reaching out to Legolas to bring him back, even though that the, the Bilbo and them do spend time with the with the uh, the um, elves. Does they never mention Legolas directly? So, um, I'm kind of not sure why they're going to bring. Is it to? I mean, you already have uh, Gollum and. Gandalf, do you really need to start pulling people from the other films to kind of link I it? Mean, I, let's get to, let's get this out of the way right now. Kate Blanchett and Orlando Bloom did very very good jobs. We're not saying that they didn't do good in their roles in the Lord of the Rings. The problem that I'm having with it, I'm pretty sure Nomad's having with as well, is that it seems like you're just putting them in the Hobbit for more star power because they they weren't in the Hobbit. There's no reason for them to be in that movie when they weren't in the book. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why? I mean, maybe they're trying to link the Lord of the Rings. But, but first of all, you did it out of order. That's your own damn fault. Okay, <laughs> The Hobbit came before the Lord of the Rings. It's not our fault you fucking did him backwards. I mean, it's just you're going to have so many fanboys of Lord of the Rings just fucking pissed. And irritated. I could see a few of the truly elitist Lord of the Rings fans not seeing the movie. Yeah. Or at least saying they didn't see the movie. <laughs> yeah, they probably did. But like yeah. a matinee show or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, like noon and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On a Wednesday, you know. Wearing wearing a cowl. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing um, the cloak of invisibility. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, that's the Hobbit, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> um. Well, yeah, they're, I don't know. They're, they're purists. That's why they would wear that. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, uh, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But, I mean, who knows what the fuck they're doing, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, and, you know, that has me a little concerned, especially since they cut out such a, a big character out of the Lord of the Ring novel. Um, you know, that everybody, even the guys from... Uh, who, Tom, Bom- Tom Bombadil? Yeah. Yeah, man, he was the shit. I mean, he's in the game. He's important in the Lord of the Rings. See, that's what I like about that game. That game's more to the book. Books than the fucking movies are. But um, they took him out. I kind of understand why they took him out. Because he's so aloof. I mean, there's a lot of questions about him, whatever. But that's the whole fucking cool part about that character. Yeah. And, they leave a lot of shit out. And even the guys over there at Rift Tracks kept mentioning it through the uh, Rift Tracks version. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, Tom no. Bombadil. But... That motherfucker is crazy in the Lord of the Rings Online, dude. He's a nut. As soon as you go to that fucking forest, he's, he's you literally get annoyed at first because you're trying to click on him because he's skipping around like a fucking fairy. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, well, um, but there were there were some cool um, acting notes on here, like some of the people that that have been cast. Um, one of the big ones that I I thought was pretty cool, playing the wizard. Uh, 
uh, Radagast, the brown, is uh, Sylvester McCoy. Now, all of you Doctor Who purists out there will remember him as the actual last TV Doctor before the 1996 movie and then the the, the 2005 uh, series started again. So he was the last guy to play the Doctor. I did not know that. Yeah, he uh, he's uh, he's in there. We've also got uh, Jed Brophy, who was in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and District Nine. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, William Kersher, who was in Out of the Blue and TV's Legend of the Seeker. So we have, they have quite a few um, out here, and it's it's going to be a obviously it's going to be a big big to do. So it's going to be a, really it's real. You're going to be seeing a lot of talent on the screen mm-hmm. because in the story, I mean, you have Bilbo Gandalf. They're all rolling deep with all these fucking dwarfs and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I think a few of the dwarfs are names we know, and a few of them are names we don't. I just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this movie if it ever gets fucking made. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's received a green, it received a green line. The targeted release date is December 2012 and December 2013. So we'll see what happens. Uh, when they start filming, supposedly supposed to start filming, I think February or something like that. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely see what happens there. But um, yeah, you know, um, I, I I think most people may get may let it slide. Okay, Kate Blanchett and Orlando Bloom. Okay, we'll let it slide that they're in it. You know, but if they start adding, if somehow along the lines you start seeing Aragon. You know, making it. I think that's where everybody's going. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute! Now you're just yeah. Uh, the movie, the if you do the movie right, it will stand up on its own two feet, and it won't require all these fucking stars to make little cameos. Yeah, yeah. So I think for the, I mean, you know, you're gonna have Kate Blanchett, and Kate Blanchett is just an awesome actress. Yeah, and uh, Orlando Bloom was awesome as Legolas. So I, I, I think I'm a little concerned, hoping that this isn't going to be a trend. But uh, if they stick with just this, I think we'll probably be okay. So uh, next up, we've got uh, this week I picked up a copy of uh, the Tron Legacy soundtrack, which is music by Daft Punk. Yes. that uh, We were listening to it before uh, the podcast today. And uh, that was – it was a pretty I, – I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was cool. Because you do have the regular orchestral music like you would hear in like film, but then you have that the Daft Punk style and influence yeah. in it. I, I think it really – I think it really kind of breathed new life into a soundtrack. Um, I mean you've had other, you know, uh, uh, how do I say, artist influence a soundtrack before. But, you know, Daft Punk, I think it's just fitty with Daft Punk because they basically got their whole style from the original Tron. And now yeah, but Daft Punk is the shit, dude. Um, if you ever pick up the CD, um, and I, I would say pick up the CD. Don't, don't download the track. Pick up the CD because, I mean, it's got bonus content on there, music videos, photo gallery, official movie trailer. Um, you know, so I, I think it's always kind of cool for that. Also, when any when something is cool, you should pick it up. I, should, I mean, downloading something just to see it, okay, whatever. But if you know it's the shit, like throw some money on it. Don't be a cheap bastard. <laughs> All right, next one. Given that this is uh, we record on Fridays, um, last night, or if you're listening to this, this past Thursday. Community had, uh, and I know I've been, I kind of, I've been pushing this a lot on the on the website, uh, just because one, this is such a great show. This show yeah. is just so funny and so well written, so smart. Uh, Community on NBC, uh, it's one of the, f- I think the only show on NBC I actually watch. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it is the actually. Yeah, I don't think I watch anything else on NBC yeah. too. Oh no no I do watch the event. So um but yeah I don't watch anything on NBC. <laughs> but uh community this um did their Christmas episode which kind of had me wondering after last year's 
very smart and very funny Christmas episode, how they would do it this year. And this year they did a full stop motion animation. Uh, I thought it was great. It wasn't even the stop animation that was great. It was the fucking message that it gave you about Christmas. It was just so fucking cool. And it was different, and it was smart, and it's just awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, it, it's funny too because it's like it was such. You know, that took a lot of time and money to do. Yeah. And at the same time, you're like, wow, they did all that for a personal, a character story arc, which is really what they did. Is they mm-hmm. just followed one character, and it was such a great, it was such a great episode because it, um. You know, the, basically, the the premise of the story is Op-Ed, who's the 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 um, As, um, Asperger uh, character on the show, um, has uh, wakes up one morning and he's everything's in stop motion, but everybody around him to, don't, doesn't see it that way. To everybody else, it's it's regular, and then he must. Find he believes he needs to find the meaning of Christmas in order to figure out why everything's this way, and um, it's it's such a cool cool story. Uh, I I actually yeah, and at the end you you do really it it, it really is the message of Christmas. Yeah. So it was the shit. Go watch it right now. Yeah, I know Sapien offers a lot this podcast, doesn't he? Uh, you know what I'm saying? A little sick and tired of your little side comments, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, because you don't want to give too much away, but uh, it, it definitely is, and that show, all, all in all, is such a is a, such a great show. If you like movie um, shows that give nods to other movies or you know genres, it's a show to watch. Yeah. You know, um, this season they did uh, like every trapped in space. The, the uh, sure. epi- uh, movie that was out there, I, uh, Space Camp or Apollo 13 or anything like that, you know. The, and it's so cheesy the way it's done, but it's just, it's just hilarious. Um, the Mean Girls and all that stuff. It was just, it's, they've done some great stuff. And they do do some smart episodes. The, um, when, uh, Op Ed thought he was, wanted to make that, uh, film about Jesus. Oh yeah, but filming himself as Jesus, filming himself as Jesus, and uh, you know, and and you could tell that you it, when you watch the episode, especially if you have any kind of, you know, religious belief, you can kind of see it as being a borderline of like, ooh, how are they going to go with this? But in the end, you know, it kind of comes back to, it comes back to the basis, and, and so it, it's it's such such a great the zombie episode, the Halloween zombie episode that was, was so awesome, was hilarious. All right, well, uh, I think we made it to our next break. And when we come back, we will have douchebaggery and epicness for all of you. Every damn day. (laughs) And we'll be right back. I can't believe you have me out here in this fucking cold. Why don't you just buy this shit tomorrow? Because it might sell out. And I need my precious. Wrong franchise, dude. Fail. (sighs) Whatever. Well, this night might be getting better. Hey, baby, once you hop on this epic mount, why don't you jump in a maelstrom? I don't know what she said, but I know it means you're a bitch. Whatever. She knows she wants to staff a moaning plus sixty nine a sexy time. Wow. It's midnight, everyone. Let's get this line moving. Yes. Oh man, I'm gonna bring this home and play until my fucking eyes bleed. I don't doubt it. Come on, man. Download the free trial. I think you'll dig it. Dude, I've told you before. World of Warcraft sucks dick. (laughs) Beloved co-host of the Lazy Geeks podcast, Nomad, was found dead late last night at a local Fry's Electronics. Police state he was found with a stuffed murloc shoved up his ass. We have Sapien, loyal friend and co-host of the Lazy Geeks podcast, here to tell us what happened. Sapien? Nomad was my friend and my colleague. But damn, talk about a justifiable homicide. Dude, is there Wi-Fi here for my laptop? I have a raid in about ten minutes. Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting podcast. Hello. (laughs) Hope everybody caught my uh, sarcasm. Uh, So, it appears it's that time again. 
Uh, the douchebag list. Uh, all right. So I think I will go ahead and start my pot, start my douchebag list. Number three comes from WGAL.com, a uh, local uh, news website in uh, Lancaster. In actually, it's in uh, Pennsylvania somewhere. Uh, but the article is for Lancaster. Some taxpayers furious over penalties. More than 51,000 people who live in Lancaster, Dauphin, and Chester counties are receiving tax notices in the mail warning of fines and legal action, and the letters are catching many people off guard. The final notice letter explains that even if you paid your taxes, you may still face legal prosecution and a fine of $500. A steady stream of confused and sometimes angry taxpayers filed into the Lancaster County Tax Collection Bureau office on Tuesday demanding answers. Executive Director Terry Hackman says in many cases the people receiving the notices pay their taxes but but forgot to mail in their local earned income tax form. Regardless of whether you owe money... Hackman says all working taxpayers must mail the form in the Lancaster County Tax Collection Bureau. If the form is not filed, the taxpayer is will be assessed a $15 penalty. Even if you paid your fucking taxes... Penalties are expensive as fuck, dude. Yeah, but even if you paid your taxes, they're still going to fine you because you didn't send in a, another slip of paper. Even if you didn't owe anything... Ray Rovers brought proof on Tuesday that he paid his taxes, but said it's, he still has to pay the penalty. She said she can't do anything about the fact that she has to um, about the fact she has to charge me fifteen dollars for both myself and my wife. So it costs us thirty dollars, says Rovers. Hackman said the penalty is nothing new. It's been in place for many years. This is a late filing fee, Hackman said. The explanation is not sitting well with many at the tax office on Tuesday. They shouldn't have cashed my check if it's not okay, said Adam Frey of the Washington Borough. I'm not paying them a dime. Fueling frustration even more, the Bureau's 40 lines have been overwhelmed for days, giving callers a busy busy signal. (laughs) It's like calling the unemployment office here in California. Uh, So while it may not seem logical that the tax bureau can take your payment and then later claim they didn't receive your tax return, State law treats those two different things as separate taxpayer responsibilities. Even if someone prepares your taxes for you, you must make sure you always send in this form, regardless of whether you owe money each year. It's funny how this has always been in place, but this is the first I've ever heard of it. I know, right? Uh, it also It's also important to realize that Lancaster County Tax Collection Bureau is not part of Lancaster County government, even though the Lancaster County is in its name. The outfit is a nonprofit organization that collects tax on behalf of school districts and municipalities. That's why some people outside of Lancaster County are receiving notices. So basically the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. That is same old fucking story, dude. Oh man, any time to just jack money from people, fucking government, dude. Bitches. <laughs> All right, number two, douchebag of the week, comes from the Salem. Uh, comes from SalemNews.com. Man picks arrest rather than return too heavy stolen planter. Uh, Salem, a little effort effort goes a long way, but no effort can can get you arrested. Police arrest an Altaboro man Friday night when detectives spotted him and another man in the middle of Derby Street struggling to carry a large planter from a Derby Street business. Ensign M. Ibanez, 25, is charged with disorderly conduct, malicious destruction, and larceny. But police, uh, the, but police offers, offered the man a reprieve. Put the planter back where you found it, and we won't arrest you. No, it's too heavy, Ibanez told police, according to the report. Ibanez later put both hands in front of him, insinuating he wanted the police to put handcuffs on him and arrest him. What the fuck? <laughs> Detectives Eric Connolly and Dennis Gadget 
had, were in an unmarked cruiser at 11.30 p.m. Friday when they saw Ibanez, another man, and a woman in front of Rogue, Cosme- Rogue Cosmetics at 20, 322 Derby Street. The two men picked up a large planter containing a bush and a set of white lights. The two males and the female then walked in the direction of Lafayette Street, with the two males having extreme difficulty carrying the heavy pot, police wrote in their report. The two men dropped the planter, leaving it in the middle of the road. (laughs) When the detectives got out of their cruiser, the other man ran away. The woman, who was not identified by police, will be summoned to court. So, because you decided that you were going to take a planter... This looks kind of cool. I'm going to take this with me and then in the middle of the street decide, fuck, this thing's too damn heavy. Leave it there. And then the cops go, dude, put it back and we won't arrest you. No, it's too heavy. What a douchebag, dude. That's just, that's the epit. It's like it took enough effort for you to take the damn thing, (laughs) but you don't want to put it back to it. Oh, it's that's amazing how stupid people are sometimes. Seriously, oh my god! All right, and my number one douchebag of the week: Wisconsin man picks wrong number for alleged drug sale. Uh, this comes from MSNBC. Uh, Muskego, Wisconsin. A Wisconsin case shows why it's a good idea to check the phone number if you're texting a drug offer. A 19-year-old Muskego man was arrested Sunday after a 10-year-old boy received a wrong number text message asking, you want to buy some hash. It turns out the boy's grandfather is a Wisconsin State Trooper. (laughs) (laughs) And the boy was at his grandfather's house when the message arrived. The boy didn't know what the message meant. The grandfather did, so he called a colleague who, with with on-duty trooper, sent a message back to arrange a buy. When no one showed up for the deal, the man left. Troopers arrested him, seizing the bag of five grams of hash. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reports the case has now been turned over to prosecutors. This is hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) An idiot. Oh my god. Uh, So, my, my view, my guess on this is that obviously it was probably, if it was a 10 year old boy, that got the message. I'm assuming that the other dude lost the number. And Yeah, I know. And then he texted somebody who thought would <laughs> thought would buy You can only speculate. I mean if you're trying to I mean, don't you think you would be a little incognito first, like, hey man, what's up? Hey, what's up? You know, uh Yeah, how you doing? Oh cool, cool, cool. Who's this? Oh, isn't yeah. this so and so? No, ah, uh, no, no, no. You just go and straight up text, "Yo, man, you want to buy some hash?" Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking stupid, dude. So many people are so dumb. <laughs> if you're gonna do illegal shit, you might as well be smart about it. Uh, I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> you're gonna do something dumb? You might as well be smart about it. I said, if you're going to do illegal shit. Oh, I thought you said, if you're going to do something dumb, I'd be smart. If you're going to fucking do a podcast, you should pay attention to the co-host. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe you should too. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, what are you, douchebags? My first douchebag is Nomad for being a douchebag. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, no. First douchebag of the week, Olivia Mudd. We already spoke about this before. But I just wanted to reiterate this fact. I think she's a douchebag because she didn't say fucking bye to the fucking fans. And everybody was in love with that chick. She used to go out to Comic Con, fucking cheer her name, and she used to come through. It's funny how quickly, you know, you get a little fucking pilot episode on a on a network. You're the shit now. You know, you don't have to give a fuck about anybody else. She's a douchebag, and she can go fuck herself. That says a lot, cause. Sapien was in love with that chick. Yeah, I was. No more. She's been replaced. I don't know with who yet, but she's been replaced. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, so number two douchebag. Because the third one I'm not even going to go too far into because we already talked about it. And I kind of went in a rant in the beginning. (laughs) Number two douchebag. Josh, how do you say his last name? Damal. 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 
whatever. Josh Demel, uh, Demel the smell, eh. <laughs> um, was on a plane. <laughs> Idiot. Let me see where the fucking plane was. Whatever, he was on a fucking plane. Oh, Kentucky bound plane. And, um, the stewardess was asking him to turn off his fucking Blackberry. And he wouldn't. He kept texting. And he quoted, quote, was very rude. And it was taunting. Oh, a male flight, a flight attendant, excuse me. Um, and the, the fucking, the plane was delayed. So then they had to take him on. He got escorted off the fucking plane. <laughs> that's how that's how important it was for him to be on the fucking phone. Yeah. Now he's in an article saying this is quoted from him. I meant no disrespect to the crew, um, to the crew or the flight attendant or any of the people that were on the plane. That's just not the person I try to be, and I just wanted a chance to apologize to the people that were affected. And then he said. I probably need to check myself into Blackberry Anonymous. Ha <laughs> 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 Or douchebag Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah, I was going to say. Fucking asshole. It's not even about the fucking Blackberry. Douchebag rehab. It's like you're that much of a diva, dude. Transformers 2 sucked. Go fuck yourself. Don't sit here and try to act like you're such a badass. Hold it up. You know, motherfuckers trying to get home to their families. Maybe they got a business trip or something. And they got to wait for you to get your head out of your ass. I mean, he was in what? Wait in Rome, which nobody saw. He goes here. Yeah, how? I mean, he's in so many movies. He's in that Catherine Heigl movie, which nobody saw. Every movie he's in, with the exception of Transformers, only because it had Megan Fox and robots that were shiny robots that were battling each other. Nobody cared about his character. Oh. And he, Tyrese, Tyrese was the badass of that movie. Tyrese is pretty badass. And also, he was in that show Las Vegas, which made. Which made no I difference too, to. I was too busy looking at Vanessa Marcel to even fucking notice he was there. <laughs> uh, what a douchebag! So, so well, moving right along, my douchebag of the uh, week. This is so funny. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the funniest thing about it is I don't even watch basketball. Um, dude's name is Javel McGee. Uh, he plays for the Washington Wizards. It's basically in a game that nobody was watching. <laughs> um, against the Sacramento Kings, he decided to pull a fucking NBA NBA Jams tournament edition move and fucking try to make a dunk um, from the what was it the free throw line or the no it was yeah it was free throw line dunk yeah free throw line dunk which he promptly missed <laughs> you know because you know unlike video games and cartoons we have a pesky thing called physics yeah <laughs> that fucks you up and gravity. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> so the Sacramento play-by-play man Grant Peaches Napier um, basically said, where, "Where's his quote? This is what happened when you hot dog." <laughs> Which I'd feel bad. It's fucking funny because no one ever says hot dog anymore. But the whole the whole thing that bothered me was is he did this with like two seconds left on the clock. They needed two points to fucking win the game. Instead of making a simple free throw, he tries to make this big ass fucking dunk. What a dumbass. <laughs> I mean, you cost the fucking game. You know they were kicking his ass. Fucking um, full metal jacket style with the oranges and the socks. They fucked him up. Oh, man. So he's my douchebag. Nah. Week. <laughs> I'm watching the video right now. Are you watch that video? Yeah. He's a dumbass, dude. <laughs> It is shit. It doesn't even bounce off the freaking rim. It bounces off the backboard. I mean, it's like... and then he tried to run away like nothing yeah. happened. Fuck that. Like, day. oh shit! I hope no one saw me. <laughs> and no one would have even known that game was really being played, except for the people that live in the towns of the cities that fucking oh my were God. playing in it. But I don't know. It's my douchebag of the week is just it takes a special kind of person to fail that hard. <laughs> it takes a special kind of person to try to even. I know. To even attempt to fail, you know. I'm a superhero. I'm so stupid. <laughs> so uh, let's let's focus on some positive shit. Uh, no matter what's your epic person of the week, man. My epic person of the week comes from uh, again MSNBC. dot msn. dot com uh, <laughs> slash id slash for note. Um, <laughs> Doc dresses as Elvis saves runner's life. 
Las Vegas. Only in Vegas, dude. Straight up. It wasn't blue suede shoes, but a pair of sneakers that led to a San Francisco doctor dressed as Elvis Presley to a woman who passed out at the La- at a Las Vegas restaurant after a marathon. Claudio Palma tell, um, tells the Las Vegas Review Journal that he dressed as Elvis after Sunday's Las Vegas rock and roll half marathon uh, when he performed CPR and resurrected another runner at the burger bar at Mandalay Place. A 36-year-old was clad in a jumpsuit, sideburn, scarf um, for the race and may have looked like Elvis, but in real life, He's an anesthesiologist. <laughs> Alma says paramedics um, then arrived and the woman gave him a weird look as if to say what um, he said the patient kind of freaked out when she came to and thinks that it was because she didn't know why Elvis was kissing her. She gave him she uh, she gave me a weird look and telling me she was OK. Palma told the paper the reason why he's my epic person of the week. Not only did he give CPR to a woman who passed out, which most people in Vegas are usually tr- struggling to stay conscious. Straight up. He dressed as Elvis, plus gave CPR to someone who passed out, someone who needed it. Plus, that same day, he married his, wo- he married his woman. Like a boss, yeah. dude. Top the day off, he marries his chick through a drive through chapel. It's like, wow, sir, thank you for saving this man. Uh, no problem. I got to go marry a broad real quick. Like, what the fuck? Oh, no, no. I take that back. He married his new wife, uh, uh, Ronnie, wed at a run-through chapel set up at Two Mile. Because the superhero race. don't have time for shit. He's got to yeah. go, dude. Yeah, set up at mile two of the race. At mile two of the race, a run-through chapel. That's pimp. See, Vegas does everything. Drive through. Pretty soon they're going to have just a, a bar. Want to get married? Okay, we'll go ahead and get the, the guy to come up. Come to the table. Do it right then and there. See, that, yeah. so you could be honeymooning that night. Yeah. So for me, that was my epic person of the week because, you know, that's just that's that's just a sign of somebody taking care of business. Yeah. Yep. Runs a marathon, dresses as Elvis, saves a chick's life, marries his woman. And you know his woman was turned on after she saw and oh, saved his life. Saved he's that still, life. He's still fucking her right now. Yeah. So, and, and in this picture here, his wife is pretty cute. So, of course she is. That motherfucker's a hero, dude. <laughs> so, uh, that was my epic person of the week. And I, I just, you know, you, you can't fight that. Yeah. Who is your epic person? Of well, the week? my epic person is what we like to call a real man. You understand? Seriously. This guy, uh, this guy's a pimp, dude. Keith, how do you suppose that or pronounce it? Fitzhuge? Fitzhugh? Fitzhugh. <laughs> not, not Fitzhugh. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I was like, not your fantasy here. Fitzhugh. Yeah, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Fitzhugh. <laughs> Former NFL safety turns down Jets for a conductor job. So for the title, it sounds kind of stupid. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? So uh, basically what happened, let me just... Former Mississippi State safety, Keith Fitzhugh. Hugh. Fitzhugh. There's no. Fitzhugh. I know, but I can't say it because my fucking voice is all fucked up. Listen, Keith. He just likes saying huge. I do. <laughs> Former Mississippi says if you turn down a job offer. He wants to that. say it feels huge. Oh. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> turn down a job from the New York Jets of the National Football League for his Norfolk Southern Railroad job as a conductor. Um, according to a story from the Star Ledger, it's huge. Fits you. <laughs> See now you got me fucked up. Fits you was added by the Jets as an undrafted free agent in 2009, then signed off their practice squad by the Ravens before the playoffs, and then brought back by the Jets in training camp this summer. What the fuck? Fits you was released by the Jets on September 4th. The temptation of donning the green and white can't compare to Fitzhugh. <laughs> wow. Current stable job. Fuck all this. Basically, he supports his parents, right? His father's disabled um, and can't work, so he's got to support his fa- family. Now, he's going to get signed up with the Jets, fine, but he's only going to be working for a couple weeks. He makes about twenty grand a game. Cool. But it's only a couple weeks. So his cat's like, listen, I'm what did he say? I told him I'd be thankful for the opportunity. Right now, being that it would just be for a couple weeks, 
I feel that I'd rather stay with a secure company and job somewhere I know I, I could have long-term employment. So basically, he has this boring job as a conductor for a train because you know what? Don't don't believe the hype. Conductors for trains don't do shit. They make a lo- they they make a good deal too. That's it, yeah. It's one of those jobs that if you get in, you're set. And he's probably got great benefits and all stuff like that. And that's taking care of his family. You know what? Because family to him was more important than the glitz and glamour of that football bullshit. And that's a real man right there. Yeah. Take care of his responsibilities over some silly shit. Because this cat, I mean, it says right here, uh, his agent, Daniel Rose, said turning down the Jets was an extremely tough decision for his client. Uh, Rose says the kid has more hot than anybody I know. This is his dream to play. I don't think... This is the last you've heard of Keith Fitzhugh. Now, I mean, we could say that about any professional NFL player. It's their dream to play. Really think about that. You had a fucking dream to do something, and you chose – not that you couldn't do it, but you specifically chose not to do yeah. it. I mean, it's it, – you know, <laughs> it, it is kind of a sign of the times. You know, when you think about it, that you want to go with something that's stable so you can support your family as opposed to something that, you know, is good. Yeah, you get to play football. You know, you make so much, but after that, what happens? I mean, some people will think like, "Oh, well, twenty thousand in a game—that's you know, that's a lot." Yeah, but if you play four or five games, yeah, you know, that's a hundred thousand. But in this account, two years—if you—that's fifty thousand a year. Two years, you're gone. It's done. Um, what you know? What do you do after that? You know, yeah. because there's no guarantee that the that they'll keep you. There's no guarantee that they're gonna. Oh yeah, you know, we'll bring you back next season. You know, he he's a real man. He's responsible. And, uh, you know, I was watching something on the news about this guy yesterday, and I thought that – and he says, he goes, I hope it's – he goes that he hopes the NFL learns something from this because even uh, Fitzhugh uh, said himself, yeah. You wanted to say yeah. it too, man, yeah. Uh, he, he, even, um, he even said that, you know, when, once you're released, you know, NFL don't help you. You know, no. it's like a business. You know, they they drop you, you move on. <laughs> they don't give you a severance package or yeah. help you with this <laughs> uh, But you know uh, that somebody said that they hope that the the you know his current employer sees what he gave up to do that. You know, no, I'll keep the job as opposed to playing for the Jets. He's never getting fired. Yeah. From this job. Uh, God, can you imagine though if he did quit and like you know after like a couple of weeks, you know. They'll, uh, you know, he tries to go, hey man, you know, hey, how's that, how's that fucking job at NFL doing, homie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that shit. You got dude. some other dude in the background with, you know, like, some, so some, some fucking, like, Chris Rock kind of guy in the background yeah. just going, ah, how's the NFL? Ah! With his Kentucky hat all crooked and shit. <laughs> hey, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Plus, I hope the zoo gets to play again because he deserves it. That's that's a real yeah. man right there. Yeah, and he's well, from what I also heard too is that he didn't have a lot of time to um, mull over. Like, it's the fucking NFL, dude. They're like, yeah, we'll give you like a day. Yeah, you know, and, figure your shit out. And he said he he it wasn't enough time to get in touch with his company to find out if he could even take a leave of absence. But by the time he found out, he already had to de- had to make a decision. So he said no, and his employer. Said, well, yeah, you could have taken time off, which, you know, after the fact, it doesn't really mean it mean anything. But yeah, still though, he's the shit. But yeah, I give that guy total credit for that. I mean, that's just that's just epic. You giving up on your dream to support your family. That's that's a lot. You know, not a lot of people will do that. You know, you get a lot of jerk offs that'll be like, NFL's calling me. Fuck you, bitch. I'm out of yeah. here. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Welfare, bitches. <laughs> uh, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And then three weeks later, later he's climbing, crawling back. Oh, bro. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't you just like, didn't you uh, run out of here screaming, I'm rich, bitch? Um, no, nah, that wasn't me. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, like I said early on in the podcast, this will be our last regular podcast of, 20, uh, of 2010, as exciting as it was. Um, 
<laughs> listen, I've been real sick and tired of this shit. I want to tell everybody listening that I apologize. I am very, very sick. Like, sick to the point now that I'm just tired. I don't want to fucking move anymore. Yeah, but he's going to go home and play World of Warcraft. No, you know what? I'm not even going to play World of Warcraft. I'm just going to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm flipping Nomad <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, like I said, you know, uh, we will be, and if you've gone to the website, uh, you'll notice that I posted coming soon and, uh, we will be having a, uh, a Christmas, a Christmas podcast, uh, the week of Christmas, look for it around the 22nd, 23rd of, uh, December. And then on New Year's Eve, I will be, um, drop, we will be dropping the Lazy Geeks 2010 awards. Well, we will go back and look at all the things 2010 and label them accordingly. Yeah, we'll tell you what's cool and what's not. Yeah, because you, we can't rely on you guys to make up your own mind. That's right. And you can't be bothered with doing yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. We, we're taking the initiative to say, you know what? We think this sucks or this is epic for you. Yeah, we're helping you out. Yeah, so just remember that. Uh, but uh, we want. Um, I wanted to take this moment to say uh, – uh, thank you for all the people that have been tuning in weekly, visiting the website, and making, you know, even though we launched roughly about um, two months, a little over two months now, um, yeah. it's it's been a good ride so far. And uh, um, we're looking forward to our first full year of a, of a podcast. So, um, podcast activate! <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll p- most likely be back, not obviously the third of the year, because that's just right after New Year's, and you know I'll probably still be hungover at that point. Yeah, you know, but we'll be uh, we'll be back on January tenth, twenty eleven. So you know we'll have those two podcasts to hopefully hold you over. And and I won't be sick on January tenth. As he and I'm gonna come. We'll I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back screaming. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, but before we head out, the week that um, this this coming week is uh, Dixie Chick's birthday. So I want to yeah. give a shout out to Dixie Chick. Happy Happy early birthday. Happy birthday to you. And wanted to. Uh, I apologize for in the last podcast for not mentioning that uh, it was Sapien's birthday, uh, the uh, the week we were off. Yeah, so. no, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes, it was my birthday on November 29th. So it was uh, my failure to uh, mention that on our on our December third podcast. Yeah, whatever. Man. But you could have mentioned it yourself. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget my birthday. Uh, all right, but before we head out, we want to remind all of you to uh, follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, all the music on this podcast, with the exception of uh, the uh, Cataclysm bit, was done by Kevin McLeod. Yes. Um, and uh, that about does it. So please make sure to comment the podcast on Twitter or whatever you use. The good, the bad, the sexy, and the ridiculous. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, go ahead and hit us up on the website, lazygeeks.com, uh, or email us at thelazygeeks at gmail.com. So until next year, peace yeah. out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.